So to understand a little bit better why these three um, drugs have slightly different physiological effects, let's take a, a little bit of closer look in, in, and uncover how aspirin works. Okay, so how does aspirin itself work? Well, as it turns out, there's really two ways that messages are sent in the body, basically. There's the chemical messaging, and that's normally handled with hormones, and then there's the nerve messages. Um, nerve messages is where, you know, electrical impulses are um, sent throughout the body to send messages, but actually nerve messages are less efficient than chemical messages because you always have to route through the spinal cord and the brain, and the nerve endings have to actually go all the way to um, the cell or organ that's going to receive the message. The, um, the, uh, the chemical messages is much more complicated but much more efficient um, method of, of communication within the body. So one, one um, chemical messaging system is hormones. There's a whole class of small molecules in the body called hormones. And in general, what will happen is a gland um, a particular gland, whether it be your thyroid gland or your adrenal gland or your pancreas, will um, release hormones upon some other chemical signaling that has occurred. And then the hormones will move throughout the body um, and cause other biochemical changes to occur. For example, insulin. I think everybody's probably heard of insulin. That's a small protein. It's a hormone. And insulin is released from the pancreas and what happens is is the pancreas uh, cells in the pancreas will get a message that the glucose level um, in your blood is above a certain concentration and um, the pancreas will release the insulin which will travel through the bloodstream so if you pretend like this is insulin travel all through the bloodstream and be distributed to all over your body to, to different um, cells for all the different parts of your body and um, the um, insulin will then bind to certain um, membrane-bound receptors, and that binding of the insulin will cause another channel across the, the cell to open and allow the glucose to be taken up by cells. Okay, so insulin is a hormone that regulates the uptake of glucose in cells. All right, and so if somebody has, for example, type 1 diabetes, then they don't produce insulin in their body anymore. And so they have to, obviously, the glucose cannot be taken up in the cells unless the cell has been signaled to take up the glucose. That's why people who have type 1 diabetes have to take insulin daily, to, um, and they have to try to regulate their insulin with how they eat to, to um, artificially cause those cells to open up and allow the glucose in. Okay, so that's one type of, of messenger. Now, we're really interested today, however, in, in general how aspirin works and other um, analgesics of the same class. And they work, in it's a chemical messaging system, but it's, it's slightly different. Um, what happens with the aspirin is it interferes um, with the production of prostaglandins. Okay, prostaglandins are small molecules that um, that send messages um, throughout the body um, and they oftentimes will uh, send a message to um, cause another hormone to be released. So prostaglandins themselves aren't hormones but they are part of the chemical messaging system. All right and prostaglandins are, are really kind of cool because whereas hormones have to be um, synthesized in particular glands, prostaglandins are synthesized all over the body, wherever they're needed. And what happens is the way a prostaglandin, which is a chemical messenger, is produced is um, as a result of some sort of cellular damage, um, whether it be attacked by a bacteria or a virus or um, some, you know, trauma of some sort, when there's any kind of damage going on in a cell, the cell will release ar arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is um, an acid that's found in phospholipids um, in the cell membrane, because you know the cell membranes are made of lipids, lipid bilayer, and um, so this, this fatty acid, arachidonic acid, is um, one of the fatty acids on a phospholipid 
group. And so anyway, it'll be re released, and there's a special enzyme, a class of enzymes, actually, it's not just one, it's a class of enzymes called cyclooxygenases, cyclooxygenases, or they're, they're abbreviated COX, C-O-X. It's a class of enzymes that um, catalyzes the synthesis of prostaglandins from the arachidonic acid. So prostaglandins actually look a lot like a fatty acid. Um, the arachidonic acid has just been changed. And there's lots of different prostaglandins and they have lots of different jobs. But one of the jobs of one type of prostaglandin is um, upon its um, formation, it signals other biochemical changes around the damaged cell to uh, retain water which causes swelling. So it's trying to kind of partition off the damaged area. You know, that would happen like if you have an infection or if you've, you know, broken your arm or sprained your ankle or whatever. So you can have swelling. Um, different other uh, prostaglandins cause fever because fever, um, increasing the temperature of your body, can kill off ba some bacteria and viruses. And also um, pain. It, 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 it um, increases the sensitivity of pain receptors so that you know there's something wrong with that part of your body and you'll tend to it. Okay, so it's really an amazing um, chemical chain of events, um, the prostaglandins that is, of how um, you know this simple little fatty acid is converted to prostaglandins which then sit, send all these chemical signals. Alrighty. Um, so anyway, why am I talking about all this? Because aspirin, how does aspirin work? The way aspirin works is it actually binds to the active site of some of these cyclooxygenase um, enzymes. And if it binds to the site, the active site, the active site is where arachidonic acid should be binding. But if aspirin binds instead, then um, the prostaglandin can't be produced, and so therefore you limit the swelling, the fever, and the pain. Alrighty, so um, that's how aspirin works. So somehow it is um, binding to a, to a um, receptor, or to the receptor, or to the active site of the um, COX enzyme.